Hello everyone. Welcome to Civil Engineering and Stuff. And in today's video lecture, we are going to discuss about origin and destination study. Now the purpose of doing the origin and destination study are to first of all find out the traffic pattern. Like what is the major source of origin of the traffic and where this uh, traffic is going. And along with that, which is the major route that this traffic is following. Through the origin and destination study, we try to find out the pattern and thus these data help us to evaluate the present road condition and the areas that need to work upon. So, uh, for example, let us say that uh, we have a certain area that has been selected for road development or the road network development if required. Let us say we have certain sections and let us consider these as our origin point. And there are few sections that are considered as destination points. Alright, so these O1, O2 and O3 are our origin sections and D1 and D1 and D2 are our destination points. And like uh, as a traffic engineer, you are interested in looking like what is the major travel pattern of the these origin zone and where they are going. So through origin and destination study, you try to study the overall pattern of movement of the vehicle. Like where from the respective origin points where the traffic is going and in the process of traveling which route they are following. Okay, so which route they are following in the process of their travel from the origin point to destination point that is uh, to find out. And by finding out these travel patterns, these data help us for the efficient planning and designing of the road network. That is which of the following section is required immediate att uh, attention for the road improvement. Uh, this is the like the main objective of the origin and destination study. The first is to find out the, tra the travel pattern of the of the traffic or uh, individual vehicle. And uh, using the, uh, the data that is collected, plan accordingly to accommodate the ever increasing uh, traffic as well as to install the traffic management devices or facilities so as to uh, ensure that this, uh, the movement of the traffic around the route is smooth. All right. Now, how these uh, OLD studies are conducted? So there are these uh, five methods by which the origin and destination studies are conducted. The first one is the license plate method. Then we have type on car method. Then we have roadside interview method. Then home interview method. And at the end, we have written postcard method. So let us discuss about each in detail. So the first one that we are going to discuss is the license plate method. Now in license plate method, so just like we have discussed just now, uh, the study in the study zone, few origin points are selected. Let's say O O1, O2, O3, O4 are, are our origin points, and then we have the destination points D1, D2, D3, and D4. Let's say these are our destination points, and there are the number of routes that connect from the origin to destination. Right? There are the number of routes that connect from the origin to destination point. Right. Now, in license state method, in license state method, what we do is we deploy a group of surveyors in the respective origin as well as in the respective destination point. All right, we have a group of surveyors that are that are deployed at the origin point as well as at the destination point. Right? These are listed group of surveyors. Now the function of these group of surveyors is as soon as as soon as a vehicle exits or in, starts from the origin point, a vehicle starts from the from the origin point. These group of surveyors they record the license plate number of the vehicle. 
as well as the surveys that are present at the destination point if any vehicle or all the vehicles that are crossing the respective destination point these group of surveyors they record the license plate of all the vehicles that are exiting the destination point all right so as all the vehicles that are going from the origin zone moves from the origin zone the surveyor records the license plate number of the vehicle and as soon as any vehicle is exiting the destination zone this group of surveyor records the license plate of those vehicles so at the end of the uh, survey duration so uh, when the time period of ond study is over these surveyors at the origin and at the destination they have all the license plate all the license plate records with them and then they match the the similar license plate that are there in the origin and then they are there at the destination zone so through that they are able to see that these vehicles were traveling in the specific specific zone and following a certain path all right so uh, needless to say uh, doing so will lead to huge amount of uh, data collection and to analyze this amount of data becomes a very tedious task all right and uh, this can be done either manually or it can be done using some uh, software and uh, right now let's uh, these data license plate data are collected from the faster data all right so let, let's say you have uh, you have you are doing a ond study in between the uh, two toll plazas so any vehicle any vehicle when it crosses the uh, one uh, one of the toll plaza so this toll plaza records the fast tag number and as soon as uh, the vehicle exits a toll plaza it has again uh, taken the fast tag data so like this uh, the uh, data is accumulated and can be analyzed for for the respective uh, desired Uh, traffic pattern study. All right. So uh, in lesson speed method, uh, the uh, uh, the entry and exit points are decided, and the group of surveyors are deputed at the entry and exit. And these group of surveyors record the lesson speed of the vehicle that are entering and exiting the study section. And after the time duration, they compute and analyze the uh, the the lesson speed and match the lesson speed. And from there, they get to uh, know the travel pattern of the of the of the vehicles that are moving in this study section all right and the like the negative point is that uh, uh, of the lesson speed method is that first of all the uh, the first negative point of this method the first negative point of this method is that too much data is collected right the first negative point is that too much data is is collected and because of this too much data the analysis the analysis of this uh, data uh, this uh, data takes time the second negative point that is attached is that at the same time lot of vehicle crosses the origin as well as the destination point there are number of vehicles that crosses the study section all right and because of this number of vehicles crossing the, at the same time it may happen that few of the lesson plate a uh, few of the license plate number can get missed out because of the human error and uh, because like recording the license plate uh, becomes a very tedious task especially for a moving when the vehicles are constantly moving all right so this becomes a, a tedious task so uh, because of the human error all the number plates may, may or may not be recorded all right so this was your license plate number now this limitation that all the uh, number plates uh, that recording the uh, all the number plates becomes a tedious task so to uh, to ease out the recording of the uh, vehicles or to note down the vehicles the next method that is adopted is the tag on car method <coughs> the next method that is adopted is the or uh, is the tag on car method now in tag on car method the method is similar to license plate method but instead of recording the license plate we put a tag on the car now this tag on the car can be 
of any form right uh, it can be like a simple circular re reflective type tag right uh, reflective a uh, reflective type tag it can be placed either at the at the front of the vehicle or at the back uh, back glass of the vehicle right and uh, this reflective type tag when the uh, are placed at the origin point this reflective type tag when placed at the origin point so as and when the vehicle travels to the respective destination point so like noting this reflective type tag becomes an easier uh, easier thing to do compared to noting the, the all the lesson stage so a group a surveyor puts a tag on the vehicle and there is a group of surveyors that are present at the respective destination point and the the surveyor informs via uh, wireless communication that he has placed the tag on a let's say on a on a car right or on a bike or on a truck so the surveyor here or if they can even specify that this there is a red car over which they have put the tag or the brand of the car uh, on which they have put the tag so uh, surveyor here will be uh, attentive enough to look in, towards the let's say a blue uh, a blue suv is there so they they will just uh, keep a watch over the blue suv that are crossing at the destination section and from there they uh, get to know that yes uh, the vehicle has crossed and in case there are multiple origin points in case there are multiple origin points and multiple destination points so different different uh, color coded uh, reflective type tags can be used so let's say a red one a uh, 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 orange one or a yellow type of tag has been placed so from there uh, if uh, a red yellow card tag goes from the origin to destination they get to know the the uh, origin point as well as the uh, end destination point likewise if an orange tag car goes to let's say b3 so they get to know that the origin point was o2 and destination point is b3 right so the recording of these uh, becomes a very easy uh, easy thing to do Uh, so that is like a advantage over the lesson speed method that it is very useful in case of heavy traffic condition like so we have discussed in lesson speed it becomes very difficult uh, to record the lesson speed of in case of heavy traffic condition and while the like the uh, like identifying the tags on the car becomes completely easy and likewise you don't have to collect the, all the data you have to just look into the uh, uh, look for the tag on the car right so Uh, comparatively, uh, compared to the lesson spread method, it becomes uh, like less amount of data has to be collected, right? So this was your tag on car method. Now, to further ease out the uh, the mode of recording the uh, data, another method uh, that is uh, much easier and uh, is more effective than the previous two is the roadside interview method. in roadside interview method what we do is we interview the respective commuters that are moving in the road section all right so instead of uh, just looking towards the uh, towards the specific vehicles we simply ask the uh, commuters in the, uh, in the that are going through the study section and we uh, we have a fixed questionnaire with, uh, that is prepared with the surveyor and they the surveyor asks the commuter that from where they are coming and to where they are going at what time they usually come what is the frequency like they, do they come daily or like is a weekend thing or a weekday thing so such kind of questions are asked and, and uh, likewise uh, how comfortable their journey is what is their congestion points that they have faced throughout the journey and like this uh, kind of question, well uh, well sorted out question questionnaire is prepared and through this uh they uh, the surveyors do the roadside interview and from there uh, they get to know uh, the desired information right it's a much more easier way of uh, of getting or uh, collecting the data compared to the lesson plate and the tag on car method all right but then again there is some drawback that is attached to the roadside interview method and that drawback is that many a times the uh, the commuters may not be comfortable or they do not have time to give uh, to answer the questions by the uh, that are put down by the surveyor right so uh, suppose uh, uh, the surveys are done at the 
peak traffic hours like like the the commuters are going towards their office and at the same time and at that time if, if the if the surveyor uh, says that please give me your uh, uh, your time and like we want to ask few questions they will say no 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 we have to like we are getting late for the office so they won't they won't comply with this with this roadside interview uh, method right it becomes uh, they they might get late to, to their uh, whatever work they are going right so that's a negative that is attached to it and the positive is it's fairly is effective as well as easy to record the data compared to both of the uh, above method that we have discussed that is lesson spirit method and tagon card method all right so the vehicles are uh, stop at certain interview stations and uh, like well, we have well prepared questionnaire questionnaire prepared to uh, with us and we have these questions right it's a short uh, and requires uh, required data is collected so like mm, uh, very precise data are collected compared to the uh, other two and the negative is is uh, it should be lack of cooperation not cooperation it should be lack of cooperation from whom from commuters all right lack of cooperation from commuters why they may be getting late to their office or they may not be interested right so like this uh, uh, that is some negative that is attached to the road side interview all right so to to cover this negative of the uh, that is attached to the road side interview method we move to the another uh, type of uh, method by which we can collect the data and that method is home interview method all right so in the road side interview the commuter might be going towards uh, there might be some urgency uh, where the uh, travelers are going so uh, instead of asking at that time where they are at hurry why not uh, do a home interview right like we have discussed in the earlier part that the there are certain zones that are taken into into purview at uh, in between which we are interested right there are certain zones where we are interested to 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 carry out the study all right so uh, so since the zones are identified so the group of surveyors what they do is they go to respective localities uh, and houses of the people that are present in the localities and directly ask them right they ask them like uh, we are from the traffic department of the city and uh, we are plan we are looking into the columns that are being faced by uh, your zone uh, to reach to a certain Uh, point. So we want to do a certain questionnaire, and can you please answer these these questions? And like this, they have a, a very well questionnaire prepared with them, and they ask the ask the uh, the locals about that, right? And uh, uh, the the questionnaire is mostly about their trip uh, that they do, right? And by doing so, by just going to their houses, uh, we can avoid the uh, stopping the vehicles along alongside of the road, right? and uh, but then again there is uh, this lack of cooperation uh, so on that can be there not everyone is comfortable uh, in answering they may say that no no we don't want to want for that uh, come after work come after two days come after three days we are busy right now and like that right so uh, more the lack of cooperation is there but if you imagine the lack of cooperation will be somewhat lesser than uh, what uh, we would have faced in the uh, road side interview method all right so uh, to like to overcome this we have uh, the another method uh, that is the written postcard method right we have another method called as the written postcard method and in this uh, method what we basically do is we we prepare a prepaid business card uh, right uh, prepaid means that all the uh, uh, the the traveler has to just put up in the uh, put down in the letter box and no such no charge has to be paid by him or, or her right the, uh, so a prepaid business supply card is there right which contains the address to which uh, or address of the, uh, the uh, where the, uh, the card has to be posted right and uh, in that uh, that postcard uh, basically all the questionnaires are written right so these questionnaires uh, again we have the respective locality right we have the respective localities uh, so these and these postcards are 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 sent to these uh, these localities and uh, there 
based upon their comfort so as in when the uh, the respective person is free they can answer the the questions that are given in the postcard they can answer these questions and from there and then they all they have to do is uh, when they move uh, as and when they have time they just post it in, in, into the letter box right and it will reach uh, to the to to the to the address that has already been written into the postcard right so the advantage of this method is that it is extremely easy right it is very easy and like uh, people can answer uh, the uh, postcard with their own comfort right and uh, negative is again lack of cooperation of course not everyone will uh, written back the postcard right so that is one thing uh, that is uh, a negative that is attached to it but you can very well imagine that this lack of cooperation might be lesser than the other two counterpart that we have discussed right so this is another way of like performing the origin and destination study all right now once we have uh, done uh, through these method that we have discussed uh, in the uh, just now so after doing after uh, performing the ond study after collecting all the data uh, these data are represented in certain way right they they, they there is certain way in this uh, in which the data are represented so uh, the most famous is the design line method then we have contour line method and then we have the pie chart method right so let us discuss about these in detail so the first one is the design line method so let's take the example that we had discussed in the in the start of the lecture so let's say we have this as our o1 this as o2 and this as o3 these are these are our origin points and uh, we have this as our destination point 1 this is our destination point 2 and uh, let's say uh, this one uh, let's say its name is anything this is our destination point 3 right so uh, there will be there will be a number of road networks that will be connecting uh these point right the, these points will are interconnected with number of road networks right Num the number of roads connect each other all right so in the desired line method what we do is we have the data okay so and we have the road map uh, in front of us and these data are analyzed and from these data uh, let's say uh, the first data says that o o1 uh, go uh, let me just name these routes let's say it is a b c and d just for example purpose let's say e f and g h like this right and uh, the first data says that from o1 to d1 from o1 to d1 uh, route a is followed so a line will be made uh, that is going from o1 to d1 likewise uh, o1 to d2 route a is again followed so again a line will be followed line, line will, will be made and likewise uh, it says o2 to uh, d2 route b is followed okay o2 to b uh, route b is followed and likewise uh, each and every data is analyzed and as as the Uh, data says the line is made in between the study zone, and as we keep on repeating, let's say again if we see that O1 to D1 route A is followed, we'll again put a line, and then if the same is repeated, we'll again put the line, we'll again put the line. So you can see with each repetition, with with each repetition, the line gets thicker and thicker, right? With each repetition, the line the line gets thicker and thicker. All right. so after the end of the analysis the line that has the maximum thickness as you can see here the line that has maximum thickness out of all shows the most favored trip uh like most favored route that is being followed by the commuter all right and from there they get to know like uh, which route uh, they are uh, most preferring all right so in the design line method what happens is so straight line connecting the origin and destination points are there and uh, as we, the uh, number of trips on in both direction increases the width of the desired line increases right and to uh, this it has to decide the actual desired line of the road visit right so uh, like this you can 
we have the various origin points and we have various destination points just like we have discussed now and uh, as the the number trees increases the width increases right as the so as it increases the number of width increases so uh, through uh, through these uh, we can visually represent the uh, the data that we have observed from the ond study all right the next is the contour line right the next is the contour line now contour lines uh, just like the uh, uh, the same contour that we have studied in the survey uh, these are the lines that are uh, that contain the equivalent amount of traffic volume that are moving in the study zone all right so uh, certain traffic volume uh, is awarded and from there the contours are drawn so you can see here the red shows the maximum amount of uh, route that is being followed by the vehicles right so uh, like blue can represent a mid range green can represent a uh, uh, higher uh, uh, or the lower range then yellow can represent a severe range and red is the maximum right so this is just for the presentation i'm just saying uh so this, uh, so like this uh, we can say see that the this is the major uh, zones in which uh, the vehicles are traveling right and from there we are able to analyze uh, the the area where the focus has to be done all right and then we have a third method one of the simplest method that is the pie chart and uh, whatever data that we have collected we divided in the into the percentage and from there we get to uh, we get to represent that uh, let's say uh if there is a route a uh, there is a uh, route a that connects uh, o1 to d1 right and so on monday uh, in, in this route um, 13% of the overall uh, data that we collected let's say o1 to d1 this is route a this is route b this is route c so let's say this is data for a so on monday uh, 13% of the vehicles route use route a tuesday uh, and tuesday route a used by 18% of the vehicle and like that right like that uh, for each route the pie chart is represented uh, and uh, similarly the population that travels from where to where uh, like this it can be represented right so these these are three of the main ways in which the origin and destination data uh, are represented all right so this was all about the origin and destination study uh, thank you for watching right thank you for watching the lecture and i hope the lecture was useful to you and if so if the lecture was useful to you make sure you like uh, the video and subscribe to the channel for more uh, videos like this and whatever your views about the lecture was do write your uh, views in the comment section all right thank you for uh, watching uh, have a nice day